This ceremony is truly about students and celebrating their achievements. So at this time, I'd like to invite an outstanding student representative, Yudov Sapkota, to the podium to offer greetings. Yudov, come on up. In many ways, Yudov's story as a refugee from Nepal is utterly unique. His story at Virginia Western, however, is typical of many of our students. Through hard work and dedication, he has overcome many obstacles to reach his goals. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Yudov to share his story. Yudov. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Sandal, for the introduction. Once I went to Dr. Sandal's office and introduced myself, the first thing he said was he had heard a little about me. Not a lot, but a little. I'm glad he knows more about me now. <laughs> All right. I also want to thank the local advisory board and the Educational Foundation for their support to students. On behalf of the 2015 graduating class, I wish to welcome all the families, friends, and supporters here tonight. Also, I want to congratulate everyone who is graduating from Virginia Western this year. You should all be proud of your accomplishments. Yeah. Today, I'm going to tell you how a refugee like myself ended up in Roanoke and about my experience at Virginia Western. My parents were born in a small country called Bhutan. In 1991, due to religious and language differences, my parents and many other Nepali-speaking Bhutanese were forced to leave the country and live as refugees in Nepal. With the help of some international agencies and the Nepalese government, people who left Bhutan were settled in seven camps. I was born in one of the refugee camps and lived there for 17 years. We were located in a small camp separated from the local Nepali people. We were not citizens of Nepal, so we did not have the right to vote. Living in a densely populated camp with closely built small bamboo huts with plastic roofs and mud floors, my life in camp was quite different from how I live today. We were given small amount of food and for a certain period of time, and we were to use it wisely so we did not run out. We did not have electricity or a personal water supply. About 30 to 40 families had access to water tap, which only rained at a certain time of the day, and the amount of water depended on the size of the family. I still remember walking about a mile to get more water from outside the camp, because what we had was not always enough. Summer was always my favorite time because we would have a river where I could swim all day with my friends and wash clothes. No electricity meant no computer, no television or phones, but we did have a radio which was broken in half. Mom needed the radio more than us, so she held it together by wrapping a rope around it. In 2008, some agencies decided to relocate all the refugees from the camp in seven different countries, including America. We decided to follow my mom's side of the family and come to Roanoke. In 2011, we packed 18 years of our refugee life in four bags and jumped into the plane for America. After traveling for 36 hours on six different planes, we finally arrived in Roanoke on March 16th. I could not sleep all night because I could not wait to see the America for the first time. We used to joke saying America is 30 minutes from heaven. Yeah. Unfortunately, my first month in America was disappointing <laughs> because I had heard it was a place with tall, fancy buildings, rich people, clean road, and that everything was free. <laughs> yeah. I always imagined America being New York City, Las Vegas, downtown Chicago. But slowly, I started learning about the real America. It finally felt like America when I bought a pair of shoes on my own and rode in a car for the first time. I went to Patrick Henry High School for two years and then enrolled in Virginia Western. I've learned so much, not just English, math, science, but to be confident 
talk with professors without hesitation, and make friends. When I first started college, every time I had a question, I had to prepare it in my head and check my grammar before speaking. And when I made a mistake, I would feel embarrassed and feel like people were laughing at me. But now, now it's different. Now I've learned that, that the best part of our learning is that we get to make mistakes. My involvement in different clubs, working as an academic tutor and teaching assistant, being a amba student ambassador, and being part of community college access program, CCAP, has helped me develop self-confidence and communication skills. I have met amazing professors, advisors, and staff members here. I would not be where I am today without the help from Dr. Virginia Garden and Martha Richardson. You have both been my guardians for the last two years, and I cannot thank you enough for the love and support. I also want to thank everyone who helped me get through the last two years, and especially Mr. Loftus for being more than just a professor. So thank you for being an advisor, a professor, and a friend when I needed one. I want to thank everyone who works at Virginia Weston and for making a difference in the lives of students. You may not always get the appreciation you deserve, but I want you all to know that because of you, the students are able to succeed, and that brings pride and happiness to their families. And because of all of you, I'm a better person today. I've learned to appreciate everything I have in life and not complain. I'm transferring to the University of Virginia, but I will always, always remember the excellent education and experience Virginia Weston provided me. So thank you, Virginia Weston, for the best two years of my life, and congratulations to class of 2015. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Udav. I know you will continue to find success as you pursue your American dream. 